Thank you for staying with us. And if you're just tuning in, you're watching What Are You Saying? Hashtag Waves. According to data published by the Canadian government, the number of Nigerians issued permanent resident permits have tripled since 2015. The growth rate outstrips some of Canada's biggest sources of immigrants over the last five years, including India, China, and the Philippines. But on the other hand, Nigerians abroad have sent home more than $25 billion annually in remittances in the past three years. This figure contributes 6% to national GDP and represents 80% of the country's annual budget. Yesterday on the show, we tackled the issue of brain drain via migration. Today, we'll be looking at diaspora penetration as a tool for global relevance. I guess they believe that Nigeria and diaspora can get the best of both worlds by taking advantage of global opportunities and growing their interest in Nigeria. Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow or SMS or WhatsApp to 081-8038-4663. I guess today is no stranger to the show. Shola Amuson is a Nigerian-born African intelligence evangelist based in Dallas, Texas, an Unleash alumnus, Hive Global Leader, the author of A to Z of AI Consulting 2020. He is a global shaper of the World Economic Forum and a member of the World Economic Forum Global Shaper Council on Artificial Intelligence. Shola was the president of the eighth and ninth session of the African Youth and Governance Conference. He's passionate about social entrepreneurship as a key to unlocking Africans' immense potential. We will take a short break. We'll see you shortly. When we come back, we will delve into this topic. Thank you for staying with us. And if you are just joining us, this is What Are You Saying? Hashtag Ways. And our topic for today is diaspora penetration the new tool for global relevance. And we're joined by Olushola Amison. What do you think, um, EC, before we bring up, I guess, what yeah. do you think about this topic? You know, yesterday we were talking about brain drain, and today we're looking at, you know, the economic importance of people in diaspora. Okay. My, my take is not even about the penetration of... Um, it's possible for somebody to be outside the country and still have um, roots back home because... Um, most of them, like you said, 80% actually accounts for the um, something uh, They account for 6% of the GDP. GDP in Nigeria. Yeah. So they, they are actually contributing to the growth of um, Nigeria. But a key thing here is those who have traveled have left people behind. When they give monies to those who have, they've left behind, will they actually carry, carry out, out. Okay. whatever we, we, wishes we, we, we they discuss have. More because about Because we've this. had issues of people who have done this, and at the end of the day, their trusted close relatives must will dupe them of whatever monies they have sent home. Okay. So I think it's best time to invite our guest, who, according to his profile that I've read, is very apt, very, very equipped to talk about this topic today. Um, Olushala, are you, can you hear us? He's joining us via Zoom. Yeah, loud and clear. It's great to be here today. Great to be on the show again. Yes, welcome back. We missed you. We, you know we promised that we would see you again. So this is it. <laughs> so you've heard our banter. You've heard our discussion. Now, the first question I'd like to ask you is, do you really think, you know, that it is really, so we know that a lot of, you know, some people juggle and, you know, would say, you know, they're seeking for better opportunities, but do you think that it is possible to juggle both worlds successfully and really gain global relevance? Thank you very, very much. I'll start with the words of um, Ola Kunle Shori, uh, who himself is a global iconocast, uh, global thought leader, who, 11 years ago started helping me understand the value of global relevance. I'll start with his words that the strength of any material is in its universal appeal. Wow. What that means essentially is that if you claim that you are strong, then you have to be strong in every definition of it. You can't be a lizard in Nigeria mm. and expect to be an alligator in the United States. You can mm. be tall today in Nigeria and be short tomorrow in Germany. So essentially, 
the value of our existence must be really tested by our ability to provide value to the world around us, not just the nation we are born in. So it is truly possible for somebody to be born somewhere in one part of the world and live a life that is not just impactful to those within their immediate environment, mm. but to have that much value and experience the freedom that their individuality so deserves, that they are able to actually move to a new country, express the same value they used to express at home, be accepted in that country, generate enough capital and value in that country, and bring the GDP to headquarter back home in Nigeria. That is indeed possible. Fantastic. Uh, I like the fact that you said it is possible, but how is it possible? How would you in, um, encourage individuals to actually go out and you know live abroad and also come back home or have roots also back home? How is it possible? Well, how would they be able to add value to um, become a universal citizen? Yeah, so the, the first way to start this is the change of mindset that when you leave your country to move to another country, you're not relocating. Mm. Okay. That's the first step. The first step is accepting that it is not relocation, it is penetration. <laughs> it is that you are moving from Nigeria, your essence is expanding to another space, okay. and you are providing value in that space without reducing the value that you were providing in the space you're coming from. So you are not an escapee. You are not that. You are not that. You are not escaping. You are not. You are not trying to survive. Okay. You know by leaving Nigeria. You are penetrating into another system. You provide that much relevance in that system that they value you in that system. Yet your value at home does not reduce. Diminish. And a simple example is the bottle of Coca Cola. So Coca Cola, the bottle of Coca Cola came to Nigeria maybe several decades ago, but Coca Cola did not leave or relocate from the country it penetrated into Nigeria. Bill Gates did not have to leave America to come to Nigeria, but Microsoft penetrated into Nigeria. In the same way, as individuals, our product, our, our personality as a product can be exported into another economy to go and become of value in that place. Mm -hmm. So it starts first with a change of mindset, a complete paradigm shift that we are not talking, we're not advocates of relocating, we are advocates of global penetration. And once you get that, that shifted in your mind, it starts with number one, you're not leaving Nigeria closing down every single thing you have. You're not leaving Nigeria completely bad mouthing Nigeria. You're not leaving Nigeria saying that, okay, there is no coming back. You know, there are people who have seen who left Nigeria who actually took other people's money and left Nigeria because it was bye-bye, no coming back, no, no additional added value. So it starts with that. And so you begin to look for the kind of opportunities that allow you to move to other countries without denying you of your citizenship in Nigeria. So that means you can't run away and get into a country and overstay illegally. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about having so much value so that in four months of even moving abroad, if you missed something in Nigeria, you can come back for two days. You can come back to be a conference speaker. You can come back to be a teacher. You can come back to be a consultant. You can come back to add value. Every single person you appreciate today, from Akimu Adeshino of the African Development Bank to mm -hmm. the new Director General of the World Trade Organization, Okunjo Iweala, to every single person, all of them have had this experience. Some of them even hold dual citizenship that has given them this worldview that allows them to be tested with new substance, uh, assessed with new value, respected across a space that is beyond theirs, so that whatever they bring back to Nigeria is valuable, understandable, reapplicable to the system that is so passionate about. Okay, okay sorry, if, let me take Go this. Ahead. No, some people would want to argue with what you have just said about you know, people leaving the country and still contributing. And I would, yesterday on the show, we talked about brain drain. And I would take the typical um, cases of doctors and nurses. You know, they begin to deplete and deplete by leaving for better opportunities, the greener grass, you know, and getting maybe better infrastructure facilities. How will that help us if we have this great, so I'm not talking about, um, you know, maybe things that you could 
um, juggle. So let's say you're a professional speaker. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about other things in terms of, you know, the science, the technology. How does it help us that they leave us and go to these other countries? Well, I usually don't even start with encouraging people to be juggling things. If you're not already at the top of your career, that might not even be possible. It is when you're at the top of your career, you can begin to do that exchange. Hmm. What I'm referring to here is that even the doctors and nurses that are moving abroad, they need a paradigm shift to understand that the reason they're moving abroad is number one, they need to move to a place where their humanity is appreciated, where their value is appreciated. That is not negotiable. When I get the chance to speak to government, I was a panelist at the Nigeria Economic Summit Group recently, and I was asked the same question, because I have a company that actually brings developers to, to the United States and to Europe, and they're wondering why are you taking all the engineers away from Nigeria? The question I simply ask them is, which of your companies in Nigeria, which of our companies in Nigeria, is willing to pay these people their true worth? Hmm. Which of these people is ready to, which of these companies are ready to give them health insurance, to give, to give them all the plans that they need to be able to live a great life? So it's, first of all, it's the, it is the prerogative, and it's, the imperative, it's imperative that the people who want to move abroad should be able to move, like the doctors and the nurses. As a matter of fact, nobody should question them, right? Because it's not their, it's not their constitutional right to stay in Nigeria, no. It's not even their constitutional privilege to stay in Nigeria. It's not even their, it's not even their constitutional responsibility to stay in Nigeria. What their humanity deserves is to experience all of God's heaven all of God's planet, everything God has created. Because you see, the freedom that their individuality deserves has been denied them by other humans who mm. created boundaries called countries that are restricted by documents called visa. Mm. So before, the continents were separated because of the fact that country, countries were protecting their competitive advantage and they wanted to make sure that only people of value can cross their borders. Before that happened, the human spirit has the responsibility to be able to see the Niagara Falls, to be able to see the mountains of Alaska, to be able to move around and go to Canada as they wish. As a matter of fact, if our country was so powerful in, in, in everything, economically, if we were so powerful in security, if we were so powerful in um, high standard of living, if we were so powerful in social security, then we would have a passport that can even go to any country of the world and our people will not need to relocate. So first of all, we have failed in the responsibility of making sure these people who spent seven years of their life mm -hmm. studying in a university to become doctors, risking their life to serve people mm -hmm. for another 10 to 15 years, who have now found a country that is willing to give their children better education, mm -hmm. we are wrong to be even be discussing whether it's important for them to go. Now the mm -hmm. next step with that is to now say that are there people who truly, and this is the question of patriotism, are there people who truly, after they become well, because people need to become well before they can donate blood. Yeah. So now that they become well because they move to new countries and they become the head of you know, uh, medical sciences at John Hopkins University, mm. and they, you know, they have a great life, their kids are going to amazing schools, they're not worried about kidnapping and all of that, do they have the responsibility to do more than just call home? To, to do more than just read the newspapers and the tabloids? Mm. Do they have a bigger responsibility? Does their soul yearn for building new schools, new education system, sponsoring new political parties mm. to be able to create change in Nigeria? Because the chances are these people will never be able to smell change if they were in Nigeria. They would never be able to provide that change because they don't even have the capacity to do that. Mm -hmm. They're still trying to survive. So the moment they move out, we now begin to ask them, now that you are well, what are other things that your soul yearns to do to for achieve. Nigeria as your own personal social responsibility? responsibility. Wow. wow, that's uh, very strong. So you first of all have to go and live first and survive before you can now feed others. <laughs> that's what I hear you saying. Uh, you see, you are going to ask a question. So, so I, I was going to ask, what is the role of government in enhancing and, and encouraging um, social consciousness of um, entrepreneurship of individuals that want to go, that are in diaspora, basically. Absolutely, absolutely. So you, you just brought a statistic that I really, I talk about that data point every time I speak. $23 billion, that's, that's, the, that's what the global remittances for Nigerians in diaspora was in the year, I think, 2018. And that is half of all the, all the money we made from oil that same year. I mean, that is, isn't that remarkable? It is. That is to tell us, people, that even the government has a responsibility 
to number one, the one I'm going to tell you that's going to be really shocking is the fact that they have the responsibility to consider the people of Nigeria as a critical export. That's number one. Oh, yes, because India as a country receives 10 times 10 of that in global remittances because they have so many of their people who are engineers in the West, all right? So Nigeria itself, the government of Nigeria, the Office of Foreign Affairs, needs to think about the principles of outsourcing, insourcing, and even exporting our human capital to find out what are those skills that are in demand globally that we can invest in training our people on. That's number one. Number two, for those who already are in diaspora, our Nigeria, the orientation agencies, if they still exist, have a responsibility and an obligation to be able to tell them the importance of nation building and the responsibility that they must have. Now, this is a tough sell because a very good number of the people who are in diaspora today left out of very precarious conditions. Exactly. They left because they were unhappy with the circumstances. Yes. So you need to keep patriotism at a whole new level to remind mm -hmm. people that our heritage is very important and our heritage is more important than our survival. And regardless of what we do in our lifetimes, we must remember that there is a generation to come, you know, that must occupy the same space that we fled from and be able to provide the kind of succor that those ones we appreciate so that one day the cycle can break. But as of today and for the next few decades, it will continue to be the responsibility of every Nigerian who faces the challenge of living in a place where their potentials would not be realized to move to a place where they are wow. certain to be able to fulfill potential. Wow. So now, like I said, a big wow. Because if you count all of us, this country will be empty. So, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> This country will be empty if we follow your definition. So my take is now who stays, you know, who stays? Is there an advantage of really staying? So who stays? Who takes care of the Nigeria that the diasporans would love to come back to, would love to see, would love to invest in, and would love to continue wearing that flag for? Who stays? That's a very powerful question. And I'm going to answer it in two ways. Okay. The first way to answer it is that there's people watching me from home right now who will be like, who is he to tell me who stays? He's in Dallas, Texas, mm -hmm. right? So I'm, I'm going two steps ahead of you to help you to answer that question. Thank you. And that is the fact that for every single person who feels that they have been able to attain a point where they are insulated okay. from the current challenges of Nigeria, and it will not affect the fulfillment of their potential, hmm. and they also fill the bucket of having the resources to be able to stay. I think those are the people that will stay. Hmm. So I'll give you examples of those who graduated from Yale in 1994. They've gotten the best education they can get in the world, in America, right? They are back in Nigeria. They are head of banks and head of our startups. You can't even talk to them about relocating. Some of them already have dual citizenship, right? Yeah. So some of those people will be the ones to build Nigeria. I will, if I begin to mention the names of bank MDs, all of them, too many of them, they've, they've worked in Maryland Bank, they've worked in JS, JP Morgan Chase Bank. Some of them have homes in America. Some of them have these resources. That's the first bucket of people that will stay. You know, obviously, if I am sounding like this, you're certain that I have not become the head of JP Morgan Chase Bank. <laughs> I've not become any of those things. So I'm still at a point where I'm trying to realize my potential. Okay, those are yeah. the people that will stay. Then there are a few of there, there are also a group of people who don't have the resources. There's mm. nothing you can do about it. Even if you give everybody an American visa today, not everybody can go. True, On the exactly. night of um, October 25th last year, I did a webinar that had 2,500 people because of President Buhari's speech of that of, of two days earlier. And mm. everybody was sure they were moving out of Nigeria. But that's not true. Because in two months, you realize your situation, you realize where you work, Your you can't afford all of these things they're talking about exactly. So all these people must realize and continue to hope. Continue to hope is a commodity. Unfortunately, it has an expiry date and it has a nuisance value. Mm. But hope is a commodity that can still keep many people staying put in Nigeria to say, while I am here, I will continue to identify the problems of this space. I will put a premium on the solutions to those problems. And I will earn from this huge market. People wow. like us still have businesses and services in Nigeria and in other African countries. And we will continue to do that. And today, if you gave 50,000 new green cards to people, hmm. it will still not be enough for 199 million Nigerians. You're and that's right, why those sure. of people who are in diaspora will not give up on all the contributions we can make. Thank you very much, Shola. We'll be right back because this discussion seems very loaded. So please stay with us. We'll take a short break. Don't go anywhere.